Hey, it's Dave from CG Shortcuts. Today, we're going to do this. We'll look at lighting and texturing our 3D spheres in Cinema 4D. Okay, so loads of people have asked me how I did the lighting and texturing in this Abstract Spheres tutorial. So I thought I should probably do a part two and run you through it. I don't usually go into that side of things because I try to make the tutorials quick and to the point in under 10 minutes. Plus, I think it's a great way to learn if you give the lighting and texturing a go yourself and see if you can come up with your own look and style. However, if you do need to see my exact setups, you can download all the render ready project files on our Patreon page. And that includes all the lighting, textures and materials from all of the tutorials I've done so far. So feel free to check those out and let's get back to this tutorial. So here we are in Cinema 4D and I won't go too step by step with this one, but I'll show you how I set it up. But if you do want a more in-depth look at things, We've just launched our very first full length course on Skillshare and Udemy, where we take you through all the steps to create this 3D looping animation in Cinema 4D. But we really need to start this tutorial, so I'll give you more information on that at the end, as well as a way you can get the whole two hour course for free. So stay tuned for that, or just fast forward. Let's start lighting and texturing. Okay, so this is the exact file you can download from Patreon. So I'm just gonna go through all the bits and pieces for you to get this final look. I render all of my tutorials in Octane these days, mainly because it's a lot faster than the standard Cinema 4D renderer. So let's fire that up. This is the Octane Live Viewer. And very quickly you can see our finished result. So let's start by talking about the materials and textures I used. As you can see I've only used 5 materials all up. These are all Octane glossy materials, which if we come up here and take a look at this setup, I've just applied them to these spheres that are duplicated inside the cloner object here. You can see them all here. Each sphere has a different material applied. So that's giving us this nice random look here. Let's pause the live viewer for now and we'll take a closer look at these materials. Let's double click on this silver material, which brings up the standard Cinema 4D material editor, but Octane materials have a cool node editor feature. So let's click on that and we'll close this one and move this guy over here. And you can see it's a pretty simple silver material. It looks like this in the render. I'll just go through some of the settings here so you can see what I did to make this. Nothing too out of the ordinary, just a very simple setup for this one. I really just played around with these settings until I got a look I liked. Let's take a look at our next material. This one's a little bit more complicated. This time I've used a bunch of different texture maps to drive these channels. And all these textures are available for free online, I'll put a link in the description. And you just need to plug them in where you think they should go. So this guy down here is a normal map. You can tell because of the color and it's plugged into the normal channel. And if we open that up, you probably can't see too much here, but normal maps are very similar to bump maps. So this will help break up some of those reflections and specular highlights. We've also got a bit of a grunge map here in our roughness channel. And that's also gonna make this look a bit more realistic. Let's take a look at that image. So objects in real life are never clean and perfect. So this is gonna make things look a lot more believable. Okay, let's move on to our gold shader. So this guy has a pretty similar setup to our silver material, but I've changed some of the colors in the shader to make it look a bit more golden. And you can see it up here in the render. If we take a look in the specular channel here, you can see I've changed the color of this to be a bit more gold, but the rest of the settings are pretty similar. And again, we've got some texture maps in here to break things up and make things look a bit more realistic. One thing that is a bit different in this one is the addition of this random color node that's connected to the gradient here, which is controlling our specular channel. So this setup is basically making slight variations in the reflections of these materials. It's very subtle, but you can just kind of see it here. Let's take a closer look at these nodes. So this is just a plain old random color node, and that's driving this gradient node. That's this guy down here. And that's basically telling our clones to be a random color between this one and this one. And that's only going to affect our specular channel and not our diffuse. Let's take a look at our next material here. And you can see that setup is pretty much the same, just slightly different color variation. We'll grab our final material. And this guy is probably our most complicated. This is that marble texture you can see up here. So you can see we've got an image node here that's getting multiplied by random darker colors that are being generated by this gradient node. So we've only got gray to white values here. So again, it's a very subtle effect. And if we come and have a look at this, you can see that subtle variation in the diffuse channel. Some are lighter, some are darker. And we've also got a bump map down here, which looks like this. So all the lighter areas will push out and the darker areas will push in to the material. And we've also got another normal map down here. This one might be a bit easier to see. Let's check it out. 
You can see all the little bumps and grooves in that. That's definitely going to make our material look more realistic. And that's it for the materials. Let's close that up and we'll take a look at the lighting. Let's collapse this and we'll pop this open. And here's everything I used to light the scene. Let's fire up the live view again. So I'll just turn all of these off and we'll turn them back on one by one so you can see what they do individually. So I always start lighting from a dark scene and gradually build the lights up one by one. So let's take a look at our first light. Again, nothing too fancy. It's just an octane area light pointed directly down. And then our next light is kind of the reverse of that. It's just giving us these nice highlights underneath the objects. Then light number three is more of a fill light, filling in all those dark spaces and giving us this nice highlight. And if we turn all these back on again, you can see that's the effect of them all together. And I think that looks pretty cool in itself, but I did end up adding one more light source. Also, you might've noticed these little target tags here. They're just targeting our lights to this null here, which just makes pointing the lights at our object a little bit easier. If we move this around, you can probably see that in the live viewer. Just an easier way to control the lights. So we'll put that back and come and take a look at our octane sky. So if we click on this guy, you'll notice it's set to black and that's just because it's the background. If we turn it on, you'll see not much happens. It just gives our render a black background. You can see down here, the type is set to visible environment. So it doesn't actually affect the lighting in the scene. But if we take a look at our second octane sky, this is the one that gives us this nice ambient light and really makes everything look much better. Let's take a look at the settings so you can see how I did this. You can see we've got this light gray texture in here and the power of this light is really low. We've already got quite a few lights in here so we don't wanna overpower things. And that's pretty much it for the lighting. Let's take a look at the render settings now. We'll click on this icon and pull up the octane render settings and we'll just bring this down here. These were my final render settings and you can see I got away with 400 samples. The diffuse and specular depth is pretty high here and the way I set this up usually is bring them both back down to zero and we'll just slowly work our way up until the effect isn't so noticeable. So I found 16 and both gave me a pretty good look. And this is the rest of my settings, but I didn't really change much from their default values. So let's close that up. And that's pretty much it for the lighting and texturing. This one was probably a little bit different to our usual tutorials. So let me know if you found it useful. Something I think you will find useful is our new course on Skillshare and Udemy. It's basically two hours of classes that covers everything you need to create this 3D looping animation. I'll upload a preview video to give you a bit more information shortly, but here's how you can watch it for free. Just go to this link and sign up for a free two month trial at Skillshare and you'll be able to access our entire course as well as over 23,000 other courses, including some really great Cinema 4D and MoGraph classes. And if you're already a member, you can watch it for free anyway. And you can also cancel whenever you like without paying a cent. Let me know if you find it useful. Okay, that's it for today. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you want to see in the comment section below, or you can leave a like or dislike. And don't forget to subscribe and click on that little bell icon for more videos and free stuff. Catch you next time.